Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you microwave crystals. And I'd like to thank Vsauce and the Curiosity Box for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you more about their awesome subscription boxes a little bit later on. When you shine a piece of light through glass, you'll notice that that beam of light can bend. This is called refraction and it happens because of the change of density of the two different mediums. What's neat about refraction is if you keep changing the angle of light going into the glass, you'll notice that you reach a critical angle. The amount that it bends gets to about 90 degrees and so that there's no light actually coming out of the glass anymore. Once you're past the critical angle and the light can no longer escape from that medium, it's called total internal reflection. So you can see that I can just shine the laser straight through. But if I turn it, then I get past the critical angle and it will continue to reflect off of both surfaces where the air is touching the acrylic. So the beam does not exit the acrylic at all. It acts as though it's a mirrored surface now. And it just continually reflects back and forth in this zigzag pattern. You can notice this fact even more when you have a prism. So I have this line of laser light. You can see if I shine my laser light through it, it doesn't come out at all on this side, but it comes out over here. So it's being reflected off this surface and coming out this side. The reason that total internal reflection occurs is because of something called an evanescent wave. So normally when light propagates through a medium, it propagates with an electromagnetic wave, which means the wave is changing through space and time. But what an evanescent wave is, is it's a wave that doesn't change in time or space. It's a standing wave. So in order for total internal reflection to occur, you have to have evanescent standing electromagnetic waves in another medium right where the reflection occurs. So when we shine this laser light through this glass prism, total internal reflection occurs because right where the light bounces off, there's an evanescent wave in the air right there. But here's the thing, if you can bring another piece of glass close enough to that evanescent wave, you can make it so that evanescent wave isn't just a standing wave anymore, but it becomes a normal electromagnetic wave that changes with time and space. And so that would mean that the light can carry energy and just continue forward. So you can see that when I turn on my laser light, it's shining over here now. But now watch what happens when I bring this other piece of glass near. So it still doesn't do anything because this gap of air in between is more than a few wavelengths of this red light. So we need to reduce that. I'm gonna reduce that by putting some water in here. Now it passes right through. So you can see I take this away, then it shines this way. Now put it here, and it shines right through. You can see this by just seeing how this looks like a mirrored surface here, but then when I stick this one behind it, then you can see through it now. Hey Vsauce, Action Lab here to tell you about the Vsauce Curiosity Box. Here's some past items from some of the Curiosity Boxes, and this is my favorite an amazingly clear pyramid prism. To surround yourself with the smartest objects like this prism, gyroscopes, and more, I recommend subscribing to the Curiosity Box. Each box, like this summer box, which is the one that's out now, is curated and designed by the amazing makers of Vsauce. Vsauce is the world's largest science education network with over 26 million subscribers between all their channels. What the best thing is about the Curiosity Boxes is that a portion of all of their proceeds go to Alzheimer's research. Their new box out now comes with Theodore Gray's Completely Mad Science. He's one of my favorite authors. There's a ton of science experiments that you can do at home, but probably shouldn't, it says. So if you want to get some of these amazing science gadgets for yourself and also help support Alzheimer's research, head over to curiositybox.com and enter the code ACTION for $10 off of your subscription. What I just showed you here is called Frustrated Total Internal Reflection. You're not limited to doing this with just light but you can actually do it with microwaves as well. So in order to do this with microwaves, first you need something that is transparent normally to microwaves. So I'm going to be using paraffin wax. Paraffin wax doesn't absorb microwaves very much at all. So if you could see in microwaves, this would be transparent to you. What I did is just made some prism shapes or equilateral triangles out of paraffin wax. And it doesn't matter that there's gaps between them like this. It doesn't need to be a solid piece of paraffin wax 
because the gaps between them are less than the wavelength of the microwaves, and so it sees it as one continuous piece, even though we can see there's gaps in between them. So these are my two prisms that I'm going to be using with microwaves. And for my microwave source, I'm going to be using an actual microwave that I've used in different experiments in the past, and I have a little hole cut in the door here. Do not try this one at home. Don't go cutting a hole in your microwave door. Okay, and then over here I have my microwave leak detector. So I have it set to beep when it goes past 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Now watch what happens when I turn on the microwave without the prism here. So the microwave should just spread out like this and they shouldn't really get too much at the microwave leak detector over here. So I push start. That's only going up to like 0.5, so not much microwave over here. But now watch what happens when we put our paraffin wax prism in front of the outlet of the microwave here. So now because of total internal reflection, the microwaves are going to reflect off of this surface of the prism as if it were a mirror for microwaves. Okay, we start it, the microwaves just go straight, put our prism there, reflects them into the microwave leak detector. So it says overload right now. That is crazy. Take this away and it stops. Now let's see what happens when we grab our second prism and put it on the side here so it should just pass straight through it again and shouldn't set off the leak detector here. Let's turn it on. Okay, let's put our second prism. <laughs> it lets the microwaves go straight through it again. So it's crazy, just like the prism, it worked. Take this one away, it goes off. Take this one away, and then the microwave just goes straight again. So it's going off right now. Then put this prism there, and it stops it. So it goes straight through it now, instead of turning it this way. Then take this one away, and it starts beeping again. Take this one away, and then the microwaves just go straight that way into the camera. Sorry, guys. It's so cool to think of these containers of paraffin wax to microwaves, just like this glass prism is to light. You'll notice with the microwave experiment, I could have a pretty good gap in between these and it still worked. Whereas with the glass ones, I had to get them so close together, I even had to use water in between them to close the gap. That's because of the wavelengths that we're talking about. Microwaves have a wavelength on the order of centimeters, and so I don't have to worry about these small little gaps here. It still sees it as one continuous piece, so the waves can just pass right through it. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, and hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.